Welcome to the next episode, everybody. In this episode, I am going to be talking about my logic. As in, my logic. You're going to see these triangle things, like, everywhere in all the things I build. Most of my vehicles will even have a couple of them. So I want to explain them so that everybody knows what's going on so that they can um, A, learn from my stuff, that's half the reason I share my save, and B, just, you know, figure out how everything works mostly. I thought we would build one of those together, and uh, hopefully come the end of that you should be able to understand everything I've made. I know this stuff looks really messy and tricky, but it's quite simple once you understand what's going on. The first thing you need to know is what a NOR gate is. I've done a tutorial on the basics of logic gates and controllers where I take five minutes and I explain and do a bunch of examples with all of these. So go and watch that if you're not familiar. But for now, if you take a NOR gate, as you'll know, it will want to start in the on position unless it gets an input from something. So if I take a second NOR gate and hook it together, now when this one gets a switch, this is going to, oh, I need to set that to NOR. This is going to turn on, which turns this one off because this is a NOR gate. It's getting an on signal, so it wants to turn off. And so we can create a switch. However, we don't want it to just toggle each time we push the button, otherwise we may as well just use the button. So we need to find a way to hook this one back into this one so that our switch will work both ways. But if you connect it like that, it just drops the connection. So we have to put in a connector block. And we're just going to use a normal OR gate. So now, if you connect through the OR gate, when we push the button, it changes over and stays on. And it'll have to have another signal to this gate to turn it off. And so we've created a memory unit. On and off. Well, actually depending on how you wire it up. You could wire it in the opposite direction. That way around and end up with two gates lit to start, depending whether you want your output, because I use this OR gate just to keep my wiring tidy and simple as my output for this circuit. Um, depending whether you want your output to start on or off, you can wire the circuit um, in either direction. But either way, the same function will happen. So in short, we've created a memory unit switch, or a NOR, NOR, OR memory unit. That's what it's called, NOR, NOR, OR. So it's easy to remember. When you toggle one side, it will turn on the circuit, and when you toggle the other side, it will turn off the circuit. This is very helpful. You can use it to make automatic switches, basically, because to toggle it on, to start the process. For example, over here on my gate, I have sensors hooked up to an AND gate so that you need to be on both of those sensors for the AND gate to turn on. Then the AND gate triggers the first NOR gate, just like over there. And that is what will open the gate. However, to close the gate, I do it differently because if you drive over these sensors again you don't want it to toggle the gate to open again then your gate will never close if you drive in and out. My sensors only open the gate just like this. So now that the sensor is hooked up to the input or to the first NOR gate you can see when I trip the sensor, it turns on. That is how my gate opens. To turn off my gate, what I do is put in a timer. And the output of the circuit will start the timer. Let's say we want it to go for two seconds, and then it will turn off. So now, when we trip the sensor, it will turn on, 
and turn off after two seconds. That is how all of my doors open and close on my truck. There's a button on the outside, just like this. And we have the button, which you push, which opens our door, and a few seconds later the doors automatically close. I do exactly the same here with my gates. There is the timer connected to the output, connecting back to the other NOR gate. And there is the other sensors connecting to the input, and those sensors connected to the input. So hopefully now you can see that even though there's a bunch going on here, it's quite easy to understand. It's just all the sensors coming to the on, and the timer is making it turn off after 10 seconds. The only other thing I haven't explained is this gate down here. To understand that gate, you first need to know what a tick is. A tick is one action in the game. The game can process 40 ticks per second as indicated by the timer. So basically it means every time something happens there's a one tick delay. So one tick to turn that on, one tick to turn that on, and so on and so on and so on. Why this is important is because everything needs a minimum of one tick to operate, to work properly. And when you put this creation or this circuit on a lift, you will see this happens. And that is because when you put something on a lift, as you know, it resets everything to the original state. And that isn't a full tick, that is only a half a tick. So that causes this gate to turn off, so this one wants to turn on, but there isn't a full signal, so it tries to turn off again, which means this one tries to turn back on, and so you get stuck in this never-ending loop. You can just disconnect it and reconnect it to stop that. However, we can solve that by putting in an AND gate that says if the ON and the output are on at the same time, turn the opposite side off. See? So this is just a safety measure to stop that logic issue from happening. And that's the one that makes the circuit look very, very messy. And so there we are, back at the gate again. So we have my OR gate output, my NOR gate, my NOR gate. All the sensors coming into the ON to turn on the circuit which obviously turns these two on, which turns on the timer, which turns it off after the delay, and that's how the gates work. As an added safety, on the output, because this is the OR gate that you, would, you could hook directly into the controller to make it open and close. However, if for some reason you stopped here, and the 10 second timer ran out, the gate would try and close on your vehicle. And that's just, well, that's not good. So I've put this extra sensor in here, which you can't get to unless the gate is open, that says to an, a an OR gate over here, that says, I will turn on with either this circuit or with that sensor. So that means the gate can never close on your vehicle whilst it's parked there and the sensors will only trigger to open it and after 10 seconds or when you move off that sensor the gate will close. See it gets very complicated when you talk about it but the logic isn't so bad. Don't worry guys we're almost done if you're still with me there's only a couple of things left I promise. Also wanted to point out I am just going to remove our safety here that the half tick is not just caused by putting things on a lift. If you push a button very quickly and you don't allow a full tick you can cause the same thing and many other things can cause this issue to happen too. So if you're having problems like this just put in that safety and you are good to go.
The other thing to note guys with this circuit is I've used a button here to just trigger it but if you use a switch whoops, which will turn it on and keep sending the on signal it will override the off and stay on permanently so depending on how you wire your circuits with constant signals or with pulses you can get a different reaction out of this circuit as well or lock it in place at times like this and the final thing you'll need to understand how I get all of my dump truck arms and most of my moving parts to work properly because as you'll know if you program a sequence into a controller I'm going to say do that when I say turn on it is going to perform that function however when you turn it off it does that in reverse which is not helpful if you're trying to make a gate because that means when you drive in it's gonna open and close and then when you drive away it's gonna open and close again it's not very good so to get around that and make it open the way it should and close when it should what I do is put this controller on a loop that way it never resets however then you have to program in the appropriate command to move one way 90 then the next 90 just like that but the trick now you'll see is when you turn it off it's gonna stop at a random point so I set it up on a timer just like this circuit so the output of this circuit goes to the controller and we'll start with two seconds that might be long enough we'll trip the circuit so it turns on it start no two seconds wasn't long enough okay let's try 10 seconds because this controller is really slow because I have not upgraded it so we'll trip the sensor it completes the first action going up second action going down Oh, it starts but turns off before it can, can complete and so it stops there. So now we've made it to actually open and close the way it should. We can reduce the time here to say nine and a half seconds, which will help reduce that small upward motion at the end of the second movement. But you want to make sure that you do complete the second motion, otherwise it will revert to being up and that is no good okay guys and the final thing on the gate there's a master switch a button that will open and close it if you push it as well so that you yourself can get in and out the gate as a pedestrian and that's really simple to hook in you just add the button to the circuit like that so now whenever you push that button it turns on the circuit because it's acting as an input so this button now acts as a master on and off but it's a very simple connection and that's it that's everything you should be able to understand now why I use a timer on my controllers to make things work so that the functions don't repeat um, you should understand how my circuits work including my logic protection and this same circuit is replicated, like I say, in many times and many forms on all my vehicles. You'll find it somewhere. Is there one on here? No, there isn't one on there. Right there in the dashboard, you can see it on the Jeep. There's two of them in the floor of the garbage truck. I really hope you guys found this helpful. I hope I explained it properly. If I did, it's very simple and easy to understand. If you still don't get it, it's probably my fault. I'm sorry. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.